Recon Robot Wars setting the pace. Mace 2 had the venom against Stinger. Forklift Revenge was spun about by Killalot and Suicidal Tendencies survived. Wheelie Wacker was sunk to the pits by Mace again. Razorblade cut its own throat. And in the final, Suicidal Tendencies was slammed by Mace. So let the gears crash and engines rev for more rumbles and tumbles on Robot Wars. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who wears anti-tank tops, Grey Charles. There was a time when I thought about joining the army, just after I had that brain transplant. But real wars are real hassle. You'd have to get up really early in the morning and everyone runs around and shouts a lot. And as for the gear, well, jackboots went out with the plague. And have you ever seen a soldier with a decent haircut? No, you haven't. And as for camouflage, they're no good at that either. I mean, those army trucks on motorways stand out like a sore thumb. That's why we at Robot Wars take out our aggression in a more civilised manner. OK, egos might get bruised, robots might get bashed, but don't worry, madam, it's all good, clean fun. Philippe, who are our contenders? Hey, Craig, time to introduce you to the contestants for Heat B. Technophobic, who you may remember, went out in Heat 2 last time. Was it Heat 2? Yes. Um, <laughs> something which cost a tenner until decorations were added on, and now it's over 60 quid. A bad one with its very strange tail design. Look out for that one. Pitbull, apparently these teeth really do work, but it has to be seen to be believed. Robocow, the only robot in the competition which is made of wood. Well, the tail is wood anyway, isn't it? We like that, but it won't last long. Shark Attack here, the team, obviously good looking and raring to go. General Carnage, the Prometheus team from last year, you may remember. And of course, Bear Moth, which is back with apparently a bigger chopper, Jonathan Pierce. Oh yes, old friends and foes back again, many of them with improved weaponry. Uh, let's have a look at the round one battles then. Something against Pitbull, a bad one against Technophobic, the yellow peril it looks like. General Carnage versus Robocow, and then Shark Attack, looking great, by the way, against Behemoth. The time for talking's over. Let the wars begin. From Leicester, something. This costs under a tenner to build, they claim. It's a demented pickaxe with heavy-duty steel plate armoured areas powered by four car starter motors. They believe they're into something good. Hi, I'm Big. Uh, this is my mates Jeff and Johnny. This is our robot for something. This sharp, pointy, axy type thing is directly goes through the drive system. So every time we change direction, the axe comes over a bit like that. Um, and also on the return, this time it incorporates a forklift truck type of uh, thing, which is down here, which hopefully will possibly pick up and flip the opposition. These spikes are also good for impaling, because we can get up to about 15, possibly 20 mile an hour. Well, we're not sure, but we can't outrun it. <laughs> <laughs> From Nottinghamshire, Pitbull. Snapping jaws are the main weapons of this growler. The shell is stainless steel and fiberglass powered by two electric motors. Lighter than its opponent, its bark could be more dangerous than its bite. Hello, I'm Ivor. And I'm Phil. And this is our robot, Pitbull. Cost speed of about 15 miles an hour. We drive straight into the opposition. Uh, we clamp onto them and then we bite really hard. We've taught it a few tricks. We've taught it how to fetch and we've taught it how to bite. Robot ears, stand by. And they talk Pitbull well. Ivor's hero is Bart Simpson. He looks like him too. And something with Dig and his hair. Three, two, one. Activate. Something by far the faster of the machines and immediately on the attack with a huge pickaxe slamming down there. Powered by four 800 watt starter motors. But back comes Pitbull on the attack. Plenty of bite in the clamp. Sounds like a traffic warden, and in goes something onto the flames of torture there. And I think it's immobilised right from its first charge. And something here is out, I'm sure, on fire, burning. And a hairy end to dig in his team. Burning up in flames, the hopes of the something team. 
And Pitbull stands triumphant. And all he has to do now is avoid the house robots who come in for the kill. Steering away, coming back on something again, Pitbull. Here's Killalot there with the horrible lance. Pitbull about to close those jaws on something once and for all. That's Sergeant Bash, top of your picture coming in. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Pitbull's trying to attack Bash, who grips something, tearing and rending machinery, splitting sumps, ravishing wheels. And in comes Killalot, twisting and turning. That horrible lance. I think Dig needs to go back to his tunnels from whence he's come with Jonathan Lort and Jeff Germany. He actually wants to go to live in a disused railway carriage in Australia, Dig. Take something with you. Because it's not a lot of use for anything else. It's food for thought for Killalot. It's a mere bauble. Look at those horrible eyes, evil. Pit, 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 pit. You're going down something, you're going down. And you've gone. Oh. All that work and planning, something out. Pit for the winners, quite clearly, right from the start. Well. He looks like a Dalmatian, he fights like a terrier, his name is Pitbull, and he's through to the next round. Pitbull, then, lived up to its name stupendously. We wanted to be a bit more of a running battle, you know, but, um, yeah, so we thought we'd just uh, keep on going. Well, if you keep going like that, you'll be able to get your teeth into a lot more, I should think. Yeah, looking forward to it. Because you're through yeah. to the next one, so good luck. How much is that doggy in the window? Priceless Pitbull are through. Next up, a Baron against Technophobic. From Newton Stewart in Scotland, a bad on. No nice boy, this sharpened chisel prongs and wicked rotor blades at the front. Four millimeter thick aluminium offers scant protection, though. It took three months to build this one. A bad on has two modes of attack. This is a, a rotavator on the front, which rotates relatively slowly and can pick up other robots or rip off aluminium armor. This is the, the sting in the tail of a bad and, and it, um, the bowling ball is a cast where it goes to side to side and we've got these hardened steel chisels with a spike on the end to do lots of damage. Frog Bournemouth, Technophobic. The Technophobes were eliminated in the first round of the last wars. They've improved over six months of rebuilding the lifting arm weapon and resin bonded glass fibre shell. Don't call this Mellow Yellow. Hello, this is Technophobic, our Mark II version, uh, improvement from the last wars. We have a bigger motor for more power. We have an improved weapon, a spring-loaded spike, with our steel-piercing tip. Very strong. And a hydraulic lifting arm as well and it's extremely quick. It's much quicker than last year's robot, so uh, we hope to catch a few people unawares. Robot ears, stand by. But I can tell you there's a problem for Abaddon and the Grosvenor family, and can Technophobic and Mike Haken there take advantage? Three, two, one, activate. And it's a wheelie difficult problem to solve. They've had to get rid of the ball bearing underneath the chiselled spike because they were overweight in the pit and replace it with that wheel you see there. And immediately technophobic trying to lift the baton. There go the rotor blades chewing up technophobic and the resin bonded glass fibre lurid yellow shell. The great roar goes up as Technophobic comes back on the attack. At the 25 miles an hour they can generate. Trying to flip a baton once again. The rotor blade's no good when it's up in the air like that. Mike, who likes motorbikes and mountain bikes, trying to drive a baton in and underneath as Matilda came into the action there. Don't forget, if any of these robots go near the CPZs, the corner patrol zones, they're in trouble from the house robots. Oh, the wheel's gone! A baton's wheel has come off! No wheels on that wagon! A baton dragged towards the flame pit. He won't want the tyres to go on there, but you see there's no control now. They know it, the wheel is gone, they were so dependent 
on that ball bearing. Immobilize, but now out comes Shunt with the great pickaxe. They're trapped on the grid there. They cannot get away. They're trapped on the flame pick grid. Shunt in with a snow plow. Yeah, you can see the problem, the bolt pinning them in on the flame pit. They can't escape. On one side, they've got technophobic with the lifting arm underneath those rotating blades once again. There's Shunt. Praising about unclear. Now, can that bit of fortune favour the Abaddon team? Technophobic drives once again. Abaddon into the wall. There's Matilda. Also, Killalot coming out of his CPZ. And they're together in some grisly waltz out there now. Killalot lifts and spins. That's a great view down on the arena from behind the team cabin. So Bash goes back in his CPZ, Technophobic spins again. They're coming on a charge here, perhaps. Go on, they're trying it. Simon Grover, Felix Grover and Wellington Grover they're trying to get some life, but they couldn't. And this one will go to the judges, I think. Well, both the robots were still mobile at the end of that epic battle. So while we wait for the judges' decision, let's look at some of the fighting again. Well, they'll vote on star control damage and aggression and Technophobic by far the more aggressive. There comes the wheel off Abaddon, which meant Control was limited, driven onto the flame pit by Technophobic, couldn't get off, and Technophobic did all the work. Well, the judges have made the decision. The thumb has gone up for Technophobic. Yeah! Distracted. <laughs> I see. I see. They're say. lovely, aren't they? <laughs> they just open well. and close the doors. <laughs> it's great. Anyway, it's really warm. It's nice, isn't it? It's hot stuff. It's really, mm. really warm. A little hole in the side. It was fairly easy, wasn't it? There's not much damage incurred. No, no, hardly scratch. As <laughs> I can see. And you went right in there. Yeah, we tried. Mackles. We tried. Yes. Yeah, please. No damage, Philip. I didn't see your car. Technophobic. They're through. A bad and go out. Next up. General Carnage against Robocat. From Hull, General Carnage. Two windscreen wiper motors power the claw like cutter on the lifting arm. It costs £500 to build this updated version of that old Robot Wars veteran, Prometheus. Hi, I'm Nigel. This is Sarah. This is our robot, General Carnage. Uh, we have a fiberglass top on to protect it. It is powered by two Sinclair C5 motors. Uh, and the steering is uh, the skid steer system, which all four wheels drive. Our main armament is this uh, lifting arm with a pair of sizes on the end. From mould in Wales, Robocow. The Udall family must have a weird home life, dreaming up two cold steel chisel spikes for the cow's horns, the shell steel plate. They're going to milk this for all it's worth, let's be honest. Hi, I'm John. This is Jenny 9, Robert 11. This is Robocow. It's got a solid, solid steel 3 mil shell. It's got a tail, which doesn't do a great deal. It's wood, bopped around a bit. The main weapon is a spike, which moves up and down. And the main feature is the head, which unfortunately takes it over weight. So the head is going to have to come off, and this is how Robocow will fight. Robot ears, stand by. General Carnage with Nigel Seeley, who wants to fly a plane one day. And Robocow. Oh, Dad, you've lost your head completely. Three, two, one, activate. Carnage on the attack, slow start by Robocow. General Carnage with that lifting arm weapon and those horrible pincers. Ooh, Robocow nearly ended up there in the hedge. Well, the pit anyway. Now. General Carnage on the attack. Pull the other one, Robocow. Come on, get back into it. You've got to start moving away from General Carnage. Oh, dairy, dairy me. You've got no chance, Robocow. Unless you can get away from General Carnage. You're mere fodder here. Fodder for General Carnage. Pulling Robocow away, spinning. Almost in towards Sergeant Bash. In the CPZ, Robocow. Well, too old to be veely, veely poor in this one. 
Maybe you see the head was all that mattered. They've lost it and they're losing this one. Matilda comes in and Sarah Burton alongside Nigel Seeley can sense victory for General Carney. She's a big Manchester United fan. And this is the theatre of dreams at the moment for the General Carnage team. Oh, Sparks playing! Look at that, Robocow and all sorts of problems. Great sparklers illuminate the arena. And just been lifted up. The spike is in the claw of General Carnage. Can Robocow get away now? Lovely tail, by the way. But I think there's going to be a sorry tail at the end of all this for the cow. Robo Cow moving very slowly. All the aggression has been by General Carnage so far. The quicker of the two robots. Slightly lighter General Carnage. You wouldn't believe it really from its mobility. And there, Robo Cow on the spikes. So couldn't move away. Pinned down once again by General Carnage. And I think poor old Robo Cow's off to the slaughter any moment now because you've, you've got Bash with its claw. You've got General Carnage moving away and allowing Matilda to come in because Robo Cow's, oh, what on earth came up there? Robo Cow's in the sheep, he said, look at this attack by Matilda. It's the tail. The tail's gone completely. But they've lost their head. They've now lost their tail as well. What do you call a cow without its head and its tail? Steak, I think. Up it goes, flipped over. And that's the end of Robo Cow, surely. Killer Lock came in. Well, we didn't see barbecued steak on any flame pit. But the Udar family know it's all over for them. Steak? This is mincemeat in there. Look at this. <laughs> Shunt. Oh, this is horrible and cruel. Poor old Jenny. It's only nine. Got all the qualifications for a great roboteer. She wants to be a pop singer. And so is young Robert there. He wants to build a sandcastle, so... He's one of our top brains, actually. And Robocow, a sad end. And General Carnage, the winners. Robots do not have the milk of human kindness. Udder destruction. General Carnage is ordered into the next round. I think it was quite close, actually. Contest. <laughs> Do you? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> How could you kill the cow? It's not the cow. It's those gorgeous children. Oh, no. Oh, it's a cow. It's a cow. We killed the cow. Killed the cow. Killed the cow. <laughs> Carnage. Cow carnage. Ca carnage killed the cow. Yeah. Carnage killed Absolutely. the cow. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. We've summed that up. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much. See you next time. Pride punctured of Robo Cow. Oh, holy cow, as Batman might say. They're out and General Carnage through. Next up, Shark Attack and Beermoth. From Huddersfield, Shark Attack. Built by the 39th Scout Group. So be prepared. The spiked front edge for plenty of dib, dib, dob, dob. And 500 pounds to build. Plenty of bobber job. This is Richard, the designer, and Graham, the engineer, and Peter, the electrician. This is Shark Attack. The main weaponry is a bucket that lifts up to tip them up and try and not turn them over with sharpened hedge trimmer blade to puncture anything we can get on top. Also, the front end of the whole robot will jack up to try and lever them and tip them up. We'll look inside. The main propulsion is two standard wheelchair motors driven off 12 volt batteries with the electronics and receivers all nice and cased away. Everything is fireproofed to try and protect us if we go in the pit. The pneumatics are run off two MIG welder bottles stashed away in these containers to protect them from injury. From Hemel Hempstead in Hertfordshire, BMR. The name means strong-willed water ops. Got axes, air horns, amber flashing beacons, all catching the eye and the ear, but moth don't dance too near the flames. Hello, this is uh, BMR. I'm Anthony, the team captain. Uh, this year we've upgraded it. We can pull uh, one and a half ton with it now. So we've increased the strength. Beforehand, we couldn't actually lift very high at all. Um, we've now increased the height lifting to that, which allows us to actually roll over other robots and actually have an edge 
around the back we have some extra little weapons from last year. Hi, I'm Kane. Uh, basically, in the last wars we found that the rear of the robot was undefended, so we fitted these two axes here. It's just to defend the rear of the robot from anything that tries to come in from the back. Robot ears, stand by. Shark attack with Peter Gagan, Graham Walker, and Richard Jackson, and Behemoth, Anthony and Michael Pritchard, and Kane Aston. Three, two, one, activate. I noticed with the shark attack team, by the way, all the scout masters are here, and the poor old scouts who did all the work are probably back out on camp somewhere. Yeah, you take all the glory, boys. Don't worry about it. Behemoth, flipping shark attack up. the steel body on shark attack, taking some punishment. Not a lot there, hardly a scratch, actually. Oh, but flipped on its side by Beermoth. And there, the lack of mobility from shark attack. They won't be able to right themselves, I'm sure. Well, flip. Not a flop, it didn't go over. But now needs this like a, well, a pain in the rear. And you will get a pain in the rear from Matilda, I'm sure, boys. You need to get out of there. That's shunt as well. Oh, look at that damage straight away. Goodness me. Cleaving a huge hole in the underside of shark attack. And the only merit badge this little lot are going to get is in welding, I think, to repair that. Look at Matilda coming in for the kill as well. Jaws. Paws more like. This was a pussycat. Beam off, strong as an ox. Shark attack, more like a dolphin that's been slapped around the gills. Beam off goes through. Even his dorsal fin has gone it's slightly. Boring. That was ridiculous, wasn't it? It was shocking. You got a good thrashing, didn't you? Uh, just a bit. <laughs> Beam off, bigger and better than ever. Yeah. The bigger chopper obviously works. Yeah, we've definitely got the lifting sorted out this year. Yes. So another year older, another year wiser. Indeed. Another and a bigger better. chopper that did you the world of good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. They just don't get the bigger chopper gag. <laughs> oh, but the boys at the back obviously do look good. <laughs> And through to round two, Technophobic against Pitbull, followed by General Carnage against Beermoth. Time for oiling and grinding, hammering and welding. Ah, let's all recharge our batteries. Great. It's going to take a while for our competing robots to be up and pummeling again. So in the meantime, let's have some fun. And yes, Vinnie Jones is cowering behind the sofa because it's the return of the Robotic Soccer Cup. All our fancy-footed robots have to do is score a goal. Whoever scores first goes through to the final. It all sounds very simple, except that defending the goal are a couple of players who make Peter Beardy look like Pamela Anderson, two very ugly house robots. It's all just for fun, but that won't stop them putting the boot in. Let the trials begin. This is the first of our soccer knockout cup ties. The golden goal wins it, the first one to score, in other words. Velociripper, a small midfield dynamo, powered by electricity, weighing in at 75 kilos to take on Demolition Demon 2 and also Dead Metal in goal. Demolition Demon is heavier, longer, wider, taller, more weaponry with front and rear spikes to take on not just Velociripper and Dead Metal, but Matilda, the fullback. Who'd want to full back on Matilda? Robot ears, stand by. Velociripper with father and son Trevor and Matthew Wright. Demolition Demon 2, Alan Rouse, Pete Harrison and Theo Malcher. Three, two, one, activate. So it's easy, chaps. All you've got to do is stick the ball in the net. Easy peasy. Yep, that's what we thought about England. Immediately, Velociripper on the attack. Matilda. Good, solid, chunky fullback. Oh, you'd see many pin-up pictures of Matilda, though, in soccer strips, would you? Not really, I, I don't know. Not to my taste. Oh, look at this! Velociripper coming through and scoring! Velociripper is the winner! Mistake by Matilda. Well, we might have thought that would happen, but look at Velociripper. Great pace, Bristol goalkeeper, dead metal the wrong way. 
Super goal. We never even saw Demolition Demon, really. Bigger, taller, heavier. But it's David against Goliath, and David goes through in the shape of Velociripper. We'll be putting the boot in again soon, but right now, it's back to the wars! And in the second round, general carnage against Beermoff, but first up, pitfall against Technophobic, and Philippers with the Technophobes in the pit! Technophobic team, how are you feeling? Are you feeling technophobic? At the moment, yes. We okay. haven't seen what Pitbull's capable of. Really? So no, we don't know what you're up against? Don't know yet. At no. all? Are you in good working order? It's fine, yes. All going, yeah. All ready to go. So any tactics at all that I should know about? Well, we've got a bit of a phobia against dogs, but that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you will have by the end of this last pack. OK, moving backwards. Grr. Grr. Is he staying in there? No, 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 no. Good, because he's going to get frazzled if he stays in there. <laughs> I saw you earlier as I wandered past your bench sharpening your teeth. <laughs> yes, we hope we can really get our teeth yeah. into this one. But the technophobic boys want to blunt that cutting edge and Pitbull rising into the arena darkness. There, Ivor the driver. Robot ears, stand by. Pitbull might be spotty, but his performance hasn't been patchy so far and Technophobic scratched. But there, Mike and David, ready to do battle. Three, two, one, activate. Ooh, good, speedy start by Pitbull. Get up to 10 miles an hour, the dog. And immediately, growling and prowling against Technophobic. Who let Pitbull off its leash? Look at those teeth. They've got a license for him. Well, slightly more than the seven and six it used to cost for a dog license. 750 pounds to bill, Pitbull. Now, how can we get him to go out for a walk? Oh, that's out. Bit of flame up the rear end. You are going for a walk. Technophobe. Oh, lifting Pitbull up. And if it can roll him over, not to tickle its tum, but to get rid of it. No, he couldn't flick it over. And Pitbull comes charging back again. Wants to clamp those jaws on Technophobic. Oh! Dodges dead metal then. No, no, no. You don't bite the furniture. You're not a puppy anymore, Pitbull. What are you doing in there? It's not your kennel either. It belongs to dead metal. Eek! Well, feeling hot under the collar, Pitbull. You will be soon. Because in comes Bash. Look at this. With the flamethrower pointing the wrong end at the moment. It might be growling, but Pitbull <laughs> has got the wrong end of its stick here, I think. Ivor trying to drive it away, but I think the jaws are too firmly clapped. Oh, no, they're not! Away! Charges at Tenophobic. But Tenophobic holds on as Ivor drives back into it now. Look at this, onto the flame pit. This is where Technophobic's engines, and it's a petrol-driven motor, don't forget, could be in problems. And I think you can see the flicker of flame inside. Technophobic, they're in major trouble. Is that robot on fire, or was it just the reflection from the flame pit? Pitbull can certainly smell blood, it is on fire. You can see the flames inside Technophobic there. And Pitbull now really putting the bite on Technophobic. And he who barks last, barks loudest. Oh, and look, the petrol engine's gone! Well, Technophobic looks like some great yellow bun being overcooked in the oven there. And it's ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Technophobic, go home to rust. Well, well, well. Technophobic up in flames. Pitbull is the winner. Let's hear it for Pitbull. Come on, lads. One minute, it looked like you'd bitten off more than you could chew when you got your jaws stuck on the on the railings there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We wanted to get our teeth into something, but uh, <laughs> that wasn't quite what we wanted. A bit more than we could bite off, really. You call Pitbull. Why does it look like a Dalmatian? Uh, <laughs> before it had the paint on it, it looked like an armadillo, so uh, we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Pitbull! <laughs> Every 
right to be frightened of the pit bull. Oh, God. That's a, it's, it's a... No. It was a hat robot. It was. Hmm. So. Dragon next. We're going for it as a dragon next year. Are you? Dragon. We're oh, you're already thinking about the next war. <laughs> and then it doesn't matter if it catches fire. No, exactly. No, it's a dangerous dog. But you, you know when I saw you filing the teeth and sharpening them in the pits, suddenly I got really frightened that that was your downfall. That I'd seen you do the very thing that was going to clink you onto the bars forever mm. and mean that you were dead. We got stuck into those railway sleepers, didn't we? we you did. couldn't get off them. I know. And then what, you did something. Did you lower the jaw and then yeah. finally work your way out? Yeah, yeah. I'm very cunning. Help from the robot, really, from the house spot. Very cunning. So, and then from there on in, it all went very well, didn't all it? All we've got to do is teach it how to drop. <laughs> <laughs> had a bite, now we've got to teach it how to drop sometimes. They're barking mad, but Pitbull go through to the final. Next up, General Carnage against Beer Moth. Right, Beer Moth team, have you made any more developments to your robot? Not such, no. No? Uh, just sort the axes out. We was having a few little problems with them in the last battle. That sorted now. It's just one of the trim pots uh, moved across. So and, right, are you feeling quite confident? Reasonably confident. Yeah, it depends on what happens, really. <laughs> well, it always depends on what happens. <laughs> yes. Who's driving? Me. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 My fault. You know, yeah. they're quite oh, yeah. big stars, aren't yeah. they? Ben? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. quite a big robot to be in again. Vastly improved this year. I know. Yeah. A lot bigger. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, yeah. Oh, we're yeah, over here. They are. Yeah. They are. A bit of positive thinking. That'll do the world a good. That's what we need. I'll see you when you come out. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Good luck. Nigel wants to fly planes, Sarah wants a job as a taste tester at a chocolate factory. And the beer moth boys, decisive, indecisive, uh, I don't know. Robot ears, stand by. There, beer moth. Anthony, Michael and Kane. The General Carnage, Nigel Seeley and Sarah Byrne. Three, two, one, activate. Just wonder if those radio-controlled aerial masts look vulnerable on the back of Beer Moth to that cutting pincher blade at the front of General Carnage. Oh, goodness me, flipped over! Well, no vulnerability at all. Beer Moth with a snow plow at the front. Look at this. Up you go. Roly-poly. Over and out. And they certainly got their radio signals right, didn't they, the Beer Moth team? Now, all those boys need to do is stay out of trouble from the house robots and make sure that General Carnage can't right itself. You see the twin axes? That's the new development on the back of Beer Moth from the last wars. What can Nigel Seeley do here? Well, they're sharing a, a, some sort of grim joke at the end. But the house robot Sergeant Bash and Killalot also in to have some fun on General Carnage while Beer Moth well, I was going to say, sensibly stays out of trouble. It doesn't want to take on the house robots. Guarded there at the top of the picture, you see. Staying away from trouble as General Carnage is cut to ribbons. Look at that slice. Is that smoke I can see on General Carnage? Battle scarred now. Camouflage, no good whatsoever in the arena for Nigel and Sarah. What on earth can they find funnier? about all this. Oh, and look, Bearmoth taking on dead metal there. Well, oh, and also Bash is on the edge of the pit. Well, the house robots have a saying, remember, remember, there's always time to dismember, and they will be back at you later on in Robot Wars, Bearmoth. And Killalot has a long memory. General Carnage, out of it, of course. Oh, no, back to life. Can he edge Sergeant Bash into the pits? Shunt behind. Just back into life. I don't know if there's any mobility left in there, though. Oh, dear, oh, dear, look at that. Slamming into the top with the huge blade at the back of Shunt. Killlock tosses it in the air. There's the, the slam dunk again onto the arena floor. As Dead Metal goes for some sort of revenge on Bear Mo Ooh, right into the guts of General Carnage. Not a lot left there. A hole on the front right corner, scratched and scarred. And now, General Carnage about to be barbecued. 
Kill a lot. Takes it towards the pit, I think. About to dump it, finally. But, oh, can it get it in there? Because Bash is slightly obstructing, I would think. No. General Carnage is gone. They know it. Everyone knows it. He's looking. And Bearmoss sees. Is the winner. Well, General Carnage is total toast. Bearmoth goes through to round three. You did very well in the last war. Um, yeah. And it's gone very well for you so far, isn't it? It yeah. has, definitely. How much weight can that bucket carry? Around 300k. Yeah. 300 kilogram. Harder fights to come, though. This is true. This Ladies is true. and gentlemen, give it up for Beamoff! That was exciting, though. When you, kept, when you came back over... Oh, eventually, yeah. Yeah, I eventually. Thought, I thought we weren't going to win the battle, so I thought he's on the edge of that pit, like, so I thought, I just wonder if I can just give him a nudge and say hello. Have you enjoyed it again, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. 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 Will you come back? He always says now, but I always I think say now, so. but we always do. Yeah, we always yeah. Do. Good. Wow. The beer moth monster. <laughs> practically be a swilling, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> do just about everything else. Yeah, right. It's performing brilliantly, I it have is. to say. It's much better than the last one. Definitely much better. It's definitely sorted out the tipping. You're, and you're into those house robots? Well, they yeah. came into us, so we're trying to keep away out, but then all of a sudden, we thought, well, they're going to start coming for us, so... But last year you did this, last year you'd made sure you'd won and then you'd sneaked off yeah. and kept out of trouble. Well, this year we sneaked off a little bit, but then we thought, no, let's go for it. You've got the power to do it this year, so yeah. we want to see it, OK? Well, we'll give uh, Dead Metal a bit of a... Uh, he's bent his uh, claws. Has he? Yeah. We want to see more damage in your next fight. All, day. all right, then. Oh, dear Philippa, you might rue that. She shares a dressing room with Matilda. They're in the final, Bearmoth and Pitbull. We started with eight, we're down to two. It's the third round. The heat final between Bayamoth, Anthony Pritchard, Michael Pritchard and Kane Ashton. Well, they had too much bite for the shark. Shark attack almost. A fishy flipped up and over once, and then onto its side. Then Bearmoth took on and beat General Carnage. Turning it onto its side and up and over very, very early on. General Carnage never really recovered from that. Finally dumped by Killalot. After being messed about, mucked about, and mashed up by the house robots and Pitbull. Ivor and Phil. Something was its first opponent. Immediately in trouble and immobilised. Tossed up and turned around by Killalot. He's mighty and menacing and dumped into the pit. And then, after real troubles, came back against Technophobic. On fire and out. And it was the dog that went through, Pitbull. Three, two, one. Activate. Replacing the series semi finals. Pitbull, just running around Bearmoth early on. Bearmoth by far the heavier, nearly 20 kilos heavier than Pitbull. Well, spinning like a mad dog there. Hope Pitbull hasn't had a trip abroad meanwhile and come back with rabies. Flipped over. Please turn over, PTO. You saw it on the bottom there of Pitbull. Rolling back again though. Good speed away from Bearmoth. Don't forget, should both robots still be mobile at the end, it'll go to the judges. Look at the jaws trying to clamp down on Bearmoth's snowplow front. That's not great control over the flame pit there. Anthony Michael Pritchard, Kane Ashton in the Bearmoth team. Took them four months to build. Grinding jaws. The flashing eye of Pitbull as well. Aye, aye, he's got something to get his teeth into there. Turning away. And on the attack again. Gnashing of the jaws. 
Bearmoth into the sheepy's head. That's good driving by Pitbull. Well, we didn't think he was a sheepdog, but he certainly got Bearmoth into the pen of Killalot there. And this is a tremendous performance here by Ivor and Phil in the Pitbull team. Because Bearmoth went into this very much as the favourite for the heat final. What happened there? Just flipped up and over. It was the spike in the arena floor once. And up and over. It hopped into the spike. The spike came up and flipped Bearmoth over. Trying to use the snowplow to right itself. In real trouble here, Bearmoth. If Pitbull can nudge it towards Killalot, the dog could be through. There, the spike underneath Pitbull. <laughs> well, that was fantastic. Hopping and jumping around. Like a dog with a flea in its ear. Killalot now and dead metal. Well, there, the cutting blade on the bottom of Bearmoth. And I think also Killalot's got its lance in through the top of the Bearmoth robot. Slicing damage there. You can see the pincer of Killalot close up. They're hardly in the groove, Bearmoth. Let's find a slot for you somewhere on the arena floor, perhaps, says Dead Metal. Pitbull ramming itself against the, <laughs> the arena wall. <laughs> They're bad, the Pitbull team. They're all over the place. Oh, and there's the great flipper. Look at this. Caught on the flipper top, and over it goes. Bam off. Super stuff. Rolling across the arena floor, straight back towards Dead Metal. They've made a right dog's dinner of this. And Pitbull go into the series semi final kennels. have spiked, attacked by the house robots, and then gets a good flipping. Pitbull through to our series semi-finals. <laughs> it's the only show Yuri Geller adores, because we do twist metal on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. Still hasn't had its day, this dog. <laughs>